have done the basics of stereo isomerism, this video will come. We will do a very important thing that very confuses very many people. What is the basic difference between a plus and a minus, a capital D and a capital L, a small d and a small l, and an R and S? These are the various types of various stereo isomers, lighting various stereo isomers. Okay. Now we will confirm. Come to each of these topics one by one. First, we will come to what is a plus and a minus. We have already studied this. Based on the specific rotation of a compound, we can either differentiate it as a plus or a minus. When we have a plane polarized light going to the right, that then we give a plus rotation. When we have a plane polarized light going to the left, we give a minus rotation. Okay, this uh, we already have covered this in the first videos. So even when we have a mesesimic mixture, we denote a symbol like a plus and a minus. Plus and a minus in the below. So we have a racemic mixture, we denote it like this. This is basically plus and minus, most of us know this. Now, what is actually capital D and small d? Capital D and small d is basis is totally based on glyceraldehyde nomenclature. What we have over here is glyceraldehyde. This O, you can see over here, this OH that we see is on the right. When it is on the right, it is actually the D conformer. When it is on the left, this is actually the L conformer. So this is a D glycerol dehyde, this is a L glycerol dehyde. Now we see the penultimate carbon is on the right, it is D. Penultimate carbon is on the left, it is L. So we can control we now we correlate this to glucose. We have glucose over here, simple glucose. Now we see the penultimate carbon is this. This is the penultimate carbon, carbon number we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This 5 carbon is on the right, just as glycerol dehyde OH was on the right. So this OH, anything like this, as D glucose. Just correlate this to glycerol dehyde. This capital D and capital D is just based on glycerol dehyde. Similarly, we have glucose over here. This is you can see for this this penultimate carbon over here, carbon number five. This penultimate carbon, this OH is on the left. So this is nothing but L glucose. This is nothing but L glucose. Remember, I'm writing capital D and capital L over here. Okay. Now we we'll come to small d and small l. This small d and small l is actually dextrorotating and levorotating. This is on the basis of Brewster's law. This is something coming new. This law states that when you have an asymmetric distribution of polarity, asymmetric distribution of atoms around a single center, there exists a screw pattern of polarizability. What I mean over here is suppose we have a compound C that is connected to suppose A, B, C, and D. Now A is having a different polarity, B is having a different polarity, C is having a different polarity, D is having a different polarity. Maybe. Now when plane polarized light is passed through this compound, it will exhibit a screw pattern of polarizability. That will actually give rise to D and L. Now, polarizability can be very easily correlated to refractive index. Polarizability can be directly, directly proportional to refractive index. Now we have a refractive index of certain, certain atoms of compounds. We know that I, the refractive index I will be greater than Br, will be greater than SH, will be greater than Cl, will be greater than uh, this alkenyl group, then cyanide group, then this uh, C triple bond, C, uh, then we have, sorry, C triple bond, C. Then we have phenyl, then we have uh, carboxylate, then we have CH3, we have NH2 and H and D and F. So this is actually the priority of the priority of refractive index. Now suppose we have a compound like hydrotopic acid. Hydrotopic acid is something that, that looks like this. We have pH, we have COOH, we have CH3 and we have H. Now on the basis of this priority, you can easily understand that this CH3 is having the most priority over here. So we rename this as 1. Then we come COH over here, we name, number this is 2, then we number this, this comes CH3 over here, number this is 3, then comes H over here, we number this is 4. So actually we are having 1, 2, 3 and 4. So actually what we have is rotation like this. So when, when this compound is passed to plane polarized light, it will rotate clockwise, this is clockwise rotation and this is nothing but dextro rotation. Extra rotating, extra rotating, or you can sell this as small d, you can this as small d. So, this is what uh, the rotation will be like when hydrotopic acid is passed to a polarimeter or something that exists a uh, skew pattern of polarization. You can try this for phenylethyl, right? This has something like pH, uh, pH, Cl, CH3, H. Try this at home and post it in the comment box. Now, we'll come to a very important R and S rule. That actually governs this nomenclature of CO is very important. This is totally governed by this Khan Indoor Pedal rule. What is what it says that it has a set of three guidelines. I tell one by one. First guideline tells that 
we have to assign priority based on their atomic number. When a compound, an optically active compound connected to four different groups, we prioritize the compound according to its atomic number. Now we have suppose a carbon over here which has to iodine, it has to bromine, it has to chlorine, it has to hydrogen. On the basis of atomic number, very simply we can write this as one, we can write this as two, we can write this as three, we can write this as four. Very simple. Iodine will have a higher atomic number than chlorine, than chlorine, than hydrogen. Okay. The second rule, the second rule is the most important rule that most of us forget to do this. Second rule tells that we draw the structure and project the most, the least colored group away from you. This is what I have done over here. I have redrawn the structure and I have projected the lowest priority group, that is hydrogen, towards away from you. Away from the viewer. This hydrogen is actually away from the viewer. It is going inside the boat. So, this is actually uh, the uh, correct now, uh, correct structure of uh, the CIP. Second rule. Third rule says that now we number them as 1, 2, and 3 and see how this rotation is. So you can easily understand this 1, 2 and 3, we close with this rotation, this is a clockwise rotation. So clockwise will give us R, and if it was an anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise will give us an S. This R actually stands for rectus and S is sinister. R is actually right or you can sell S R right and S is sinister. So this is actually going a rotation on the right. On the, on the clockwise direction, so we do now. Now, what we tend to forget, very simple, important mistake, this is, this is this. Suppose you have a compound like this, where you can see same compound are written in a different way, where you have chlorine, you have iodine, you have chlorine, and you have hydrogen. Now we name the compound as usual. So we have one, two, three. Prioritize according to atomic number. Remember, atomic number, not atomic weight. Now we name this compound. So what we tend to do, most people will tend to do is that we have the rotation anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, and this will give us S. However, what we have missed is the second step that we have not projected the least, the, this is the least polar, the least uh, the group having the molar atomic number towards the back of the board, away from the this solid arrow that you see over here means that this is coming towards us this dot arrow that you see over here means that this bromine is inside it means inside this but we have not projected this hydrogen over here the lowest polarity group in away from us so what we have to do we, we have to redraw the structure again this is actually not right this is wrong this is we have to redraw the structure again so there is another rule called the golden rule that tells that we don't need to redraw the structure if this highest priority if the lowest priority group is towards it just reverse it. Just reverse it. So this will actually be R. So this R is the right nomenclature. We do not need to actually redraw it in a different way. Just reverse it. This is given by the golden rule. This golden rule tells that when this lowest priority group is towards you, just reverse it to get a number. This CIP is a very important question. Definitely you get one question in Nanko J or GPAC, whatever preference exam you have, you will definitely get a one exam, one question from this CIP group. Another now, cases are not very simple as we have seen that I and B are and C here. You can have groups where there is a tie. Tie means where a carbon is attached to another carbon. Again, this was carbon, this was carbon. This is the tie between this one, two, three. We don't know what to do. This hydrogen is away from us, this four. Fine. Now we have a tie from between this and this and this. Now, which one will be more priority? Like giving a better priority. Which one is having a lesser priority? When there is a tie, situation of tie, what we do? We take the atom next to it. So this carbon is actually attached to oxygen. This carbon is actually attached to three hydrogens. Three hydrogens. And this carbon is attached to but when you have double bond remember you take this carbon attached to two carbons. When you, when you have one carbon and a double bond to another carbon, you have actually attached to one carbon attached to two carbons. So you have oxygen that's carbon attached to oxygen, carbon attached to carbons, carbon attached to hydrogen. Now we know that in number, oxygen is having better priority. So this will have priority 1, this is having priority 2, this will get a priority 3. So now you tell, you actually get this rotation is like this. So it is a clockwise rotation. So it is a clockwise rotation because this compound is having actually R. This is actually R. You understand the clockwise rotation. Similarly, suppose we have a group attached to phenyl. A phenyl group. Phenyl group, this carbon is actually attached to this carbon, 
with this carbon will have a double bond and a single bond. So we can write one carbon attached to actually three carbons. Double bond, this double bond will give two carbons, and this carbon is actually give this carbon. So phenyl group is actually having greater parity than double bonds. So it so this is general scenario where you get most questions from this area where one uh, will have a tie between two case carbons. So definitely we have to take the number that is the, the atom that is next to it. Next to it. Okay. Now we have very many, many cases where you get R plus maybe your experience today. In many drugs we have just one drug, suppose ibuprofen. Ibuprofen can exist in R form and S form. And we can just for a practice example just draw the R, R form and the S form of ibuprofen. We now we understand what is actually R plus, what is actually S minus. So we get an idea of all this R plus and S minus. This actually clarifies all the things. Plus and minus, capital D and small d, this too is very important. Most of us do mistakes over here. Plus uh, capital D, small d, small uh, capital D and small d and RNS. RNS is very important. Thank you. Thank you.